City Council reports. We're going to go to uh, Council Member Dittball. It's actually been, um, last couple of weeks have actually been pretty light with the summer vacations going on. Um, just want to uh, uh, on note of the summer program that we had um, on the 24th was their graduation and those students were amazing. They they were just so involved and to this day I still get um, calls and um, text messages from the kids um, wanting references because they're pursuing now job shadowing situations with internships to go ahead and lead into their senior years. So um, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal program. Thank you everyone for the support and back up the students um, they they were just amazing and I think um, on a side note from that with the job shadowing that the students did with um, our, our city staff we actually had city staff that said that they inspired them to be in their offices doing the things and and they, they just looked at their jobs in a whole different um, light as well so um, for graduation, Senator Nielsen actually came in and helped present the certificates and so forth. So um, that was nice. And we actually had a local news station that come in and came in and did a story. Um, as it was mentioned before, now we're going to be able to speak at League of California Cities to actually indicate how we did. It. We were able to put the program together, and we were actually able to obtain a three-year grant. Um, so the program will continue next year as well as the year to follow and hopefully we'll be able to go ahead and renew that grant and continue and sustain the program and hopefully make it large um, like Sacramento has. So um, kudos to everyone who participated and made it possible. Brad, um, uh, Darren, you guys were like the heart behind it, putting everything together. So thank you so very much for doing that. Um, as far as the rest of the weeks, it actually was very light. Um, uh, just on a personal level, was able to actually take the two weeks and go on vacation for the first time in two years. So um, I don't have any other reports. There were no other boards and commissions. Most of them were canceled, LAFCO, and um, I think that was the only one that was scheduled. LAFCO was actually canceled. We, we had a small um, ad hoc meeting before I left, um, but that was about it. All right, thank you. And moving on to Councilmember Dukes. Have a few items. Um, attended the Greater Sacramento um, board meeting a couple weeks ago and uh, had their annual or first report. Uh, this is an organization that was stood up a year ago and uh, had some pretty aggressive goals scheduled for the first year. And they were able to accomplish all except for one goal, which is pretty amazing, putting together an organization the size of Greater Sacramento, which has 37 uh, CEOs from the top companies in Sacramento. And now I believe we have 19 public officials sitting on the board also. So it's a very large board, lar large organization, and uh, they're, they're making some very good progress. And I think that we're going to see and reap the benefits of what they're doing over the next few years. Um, attended uh, a couple different changes of commands out at Beale Air Force Base. Colonel Doug Lee retired, and the new wing commander is now Colonel Larry Broadwell. And uh, looking forward to uh, getting to know him better over the remaining months of my term. And then uh, Stephen Hoffman retired last Friday and Colonel Danielle uh, Barnes, uh, who is actually returning to Beale. She was here a couple of years ago and she's returning now to uh, head up the maintenance support group, which is, um, you can kind of think of that position as the mayor of Beale Air Force Base. They oversee all of the infrastructure and everything that it takes to keep that base running. Uh, so it's a very important position. And then on Sunday following that, uh, was out at the base to uh, witness the arrival of the first KC-135 tanker back to Beale Air Force Base. We now have three that are owned by the 940th uh, Wing, uh, Reserve Wing here at, at Beale Air Force Base, and there will be more coming over the, the next year. Uh, so it's good to see those those tankers back out there at the base. Um, participated as a judge for the Miss Peach Festival and the royalty uh, for the Miss Peach Festival this year. Uh, it was an interesting process. And uh, attended the uh, Mosquito Vector board meeting last Thursday. 
Um, you probably read in the paper uh, last week about the first case of West Nile virus that was reported here in this area. Um, it has not been confirmed yet. Um, that, um, And so we're educating the newspaper on how this process works because the uh, just because somebody says it doesn't mean that it has actually been confirmed by the public health agencies in the area and that there's a process to go through so we don't panic people in the area. But um, we will be updating on that uh, more in the future. Also attended the uh, Sarah Butte Flood Control Agency meeting, and uh, I'll let Cash uh, uh, elaborate a little bit more on, on that, but it was uh, a good meeting. That's all I have. All right, thank you. And moving to... Councilmember Cash Gill. Sure. Uh, yes, we did have our Sutter Buttes Flood Control Agency meeting. Uh, work on our levy is moving along very, very well. Um, the <coughs> agency is continuing to work on the East Squidley Bridge. In fact, that bridge will be closing at nighttime from like 6 to 6, uh, starting here in August. And one of the recommendations we made, even though we're trying to get a lot of that work done, it's probably the worst time to close that bridge because of a lot of the farmers and right in the middle of peach harvest, right in the middle of prune harvest, and uh, 6 to 6 just wasn't going to work. And so they were going to take a look at two things. Number one is allowing access for emergency vehicles because that's the only bridge, unless you go to 162 in Oroville to come and go in, allowing access to emergency vehicles and possibly uh, changing the time frame for, for farmers. So, I mean, uh, they were looking into that. Um, in addition to that, the uh, last piece of the levy uh, left, the major work, was the uh, Laurel Avenue South, and that was awarded to Nordic Industries. Um, and in addition to that, we've got some gaps, what we call the gap projects. And uh, years and years ago, there was an area between Yuba City that was constructed by the Army Corps of Engineers. And uh, during the high flood time or when the high water time during this last rains, uh, some of the samples were done in those particular areas because if we're trying to get some of these levees certified into 200-year flood protection and 100-year flood protection, we wanted to make sure that that work that was done by the Army Corps of Engineers would be certified. And um, that work, even though they've spent a lot of money on it, uh, is not going to be certified, so we'll have to go back and see how we can go back and try to get that work fixed, parts of it. But it's moving along. Our goal is to get that levy project done, hopefully, uh, this year. One of the recommendations that came out of uh, the committee was, or, or our board was, that we've been talking about a maintenance program uh, as soon as all this levy work's done, Sutter Butte's Flood Control Agency. What's going to happen after this levy project is done? Who's going to take over the operating and maintenance of it? And we need to start having discussions of that so that we as a board know, and uh, at least the public has has an idea of what cost, who's going to pay for it, what's the agency going to look like, and not just keep pushing that or kicking the can uh, to the curb. So that's going to be uh, upcoming discussions and, and upcoming meetings within the next few months. So. Yeah. Other than a lot of public events, uh, you know, that can go common, you know, with the with the job itself. The police officers' wards uh, were done at Veterans Halls. So we were able to do that. The uh, yeah, so it's so a lot of that stuff. But that was that was really about it. Thank you very much. Moving to Vice Mayor Cleveland. Thank you. Um, I was a uh, light uh, two weeks for me. Also, I did attend as. Uh, uh, Councilman Gill had said a lot of uh, community events and things, um, but uh, the RWA, the Regional Water Agency meeting, uh, was this um, last week. Uh, that's their 15th year of existence, and um, they had a luncheon, and then they had a, a few speakers there. They had uh, both uh, the Gaines, uh, husband and wife uh, and the, from our legislators were there speaking, and a few others that were talking about some of the accomplishments that have actually uh, directly come out of that agency and as a result of the advocacy of our communities as a joint group. And um, I can tell you one of them, uh, I can pretty much say, is uh, the bringing the conservation um, process of, uh, of our water, su supplying water, clean water uh, came out of not just the RWA but a few other uh, organizations just like it in the in the state of California saying state of California you're doing this wrong 
you're doing one size fits all. You're just without real data. You're throwing numbers out there, and we want to be uh, self-certifying, and you know, set our own goals. And that's one of the things that the RWA was very instrumental in uh, having occurred to keep local control, which is our goal is keep as much local control as possible. Other than that, it's just been busy life. It has been. Yes. I love the United States of America. I love the 4th of July. You ever want to participate and have fun, go to the colonies and watch the 4th of July. It's pale in comparison to watch one of their 30-minute displays um, over the colonies, maybe even 45 minutes if you're up in New Hampshire. Um, it Awesome displays. Awesome. Uh, pale in comparison, though, to the display of fireworks from the 2nd of July on the south end of Yuba City to the 6th of July. From 3 o'clock in the afternoon, folks, until 2 o'clock in the morning. Yep. What are you thinking? The 4th of July is the celebration. You're not supposed to jeopardize yourself by possibly blowing off fingers or other things with illegal fireworks. My dogs hate you. The display is incredible. We need to come up with a public display that can be enjoyed by all in our community in a safe and reliable way. We have to stop this. We have to enforce everybody bringing whatever they want to bring and launching it from their front yard, their backyard, their rooftop, and thank God nobody did it from the top of their head this year. <laughs> If, if you don't know about it, go online, research, 2015, launching uh, mortar from top of head. It's not a pretty sight. It's been done. We need to curb our celebration and get back to the root of what the 4th of July means. The children's parade that we all got to participate in uh, and watch the bicycles and eat 852 hot dogs. Um, and it wasn't a hot dog eating contest, okay? Um, it, it was just a good time. The bands out there, the kids with smiles, the dogs dressed up. Yeah, I had two mutts with me. Um, it what a what a kick in the pants that is and it has grown each and every year folks come out and participate that's what that's what the fourth of july is it reminds me of driving through the colonies and and every city you come to on a major state highway is shut down one at 10 o'clock you get half a mile down the road and you're coming to another city and it's shut down because they're having parades on the main drag of their city that's what we need to do here we need to celebrate the meaning of 4th of July and have just a great celebration as a community, but we need to stop blowing our neighborhoods up. Um, it's not safe and, and we need to, to do something about it. Um, got to, to also attend the Gil Sizer uh, meeting or the, the board meeting where we uh, passed the budget uh, for Gil Sizer. Gil Sizer's in, in good shape, um, but with the budget in place, we can move forward uh, for the next year. Also did an interview with the Appeal Democrat with our Assembly Member James Gallagher uh, present where we got to ask questions. That was in the Appeal Democrat. Uh, what an opportunity to, to be able to sit down and, and um, be able to discuss with a person that's the uh, minority whip down at the Assembly um, just kind of where the assembly what's the mindset and certain laws that are being passed down in the assembly not that he's a participant other than saying no uh to a lot of them but we're you know what are these guys thinking when when they're passing these laws uh if you ever have that opportunity have that discussion uh with james and and it's a it, it will enlighten you as to what some people think are important 
um, in the state of California when when there are other issues going on uh, that can truly that they could have some effect on, but they they pass uh, quite honestly some fairly um, marginal laws. And also today we had a meeting with SACOG here, um, representing from SACOG, Sacramento Council of, Gov of Governments, was here um, to listen to our staff uh, and and uh, Sutter County uh, representatives were also in the room at, at the time and uh, able to discuss what the needs are uh, from our community. Uh, the representative from SACOG left here uh, very impressed with with the direction, but also was able to take a tour of our Highway 20 corridor, uh, which they're involved in uh, to some regard, and then the lack of, of movement on our Fifth Street Bridge project, uh, but also very impressed with, with the uh, four-phase project on Bridge Street uh, leading the, the big work that's being done. We apologize uh, for the ditch in the middle of, of uh, Bridge Street but you don't have to go out and buy a new car every year to keep the rattles out of it once that roadway has been uh, completed. This is a state-of-the-art uh, surface that's going to be put in there, medians. It's, it will be the beginning of a, of a wonderful gateway uh, into our downtown section of Yuba City. Um, last to note, Y'all get to have a basketball team in Yuba City, a professional basketball team. It's the ABA. We're going to be coming to, to Yuba City. Their first game is November the 12th. Um, the owner is a used to play uh, in the NBA and European League. This ball you might recognize from the 60s, uh, early 70s when the ABA, before they joined with the NBA, Julius Irving shot uh, this very same ball, the red, white, and blue ball. Uh, these are professional players. They're already signing players to, to play here. The first game is against the San Antonio, Texas team. They will, the ABA is an international squad now, um, and they'll be playing teams out of Japan. The games will be, be being played uh, for at least the first year at River Valley High School. Uh, it's going to be very difficult uh, for... Uh, the use of the facility and, and scheduling regular events, but I think we have um, about seven games being scheduled right here in uh, Yuba City to be played. So it is an opportunity. It will take community support uh, for, for a team to be able to come. But I'm being told, and I'm not a marketing agent for them, uh, I'm, I'm, but from the owner himself and also from the commissioner of the ABA, um, that this is the the family type environment that when you can't afford to go to an NBA game, you can come and watch professional basketball uh, in your local community and it should be a lot of fun. Uh, so we look forward to, to and, their arrival. And what is the name of our new team? The name Sports Yuba City and, and part of it, it's the Yuba City Gold Miners. Uh, so there is a Facebook page. Um, I highly encourage members of the public to go out and, and take a look at that. And, and certainly participate uh, in whatever way you can in being supported and in, in getting the, the information out. So thank you very much for, for reminding me that I had dropped their name because uh, this ball is going to be uh, enhanced a little bit with their logo uh, on the front of it. So um, thank you very much. And we will again adjourn this meeting. Uh, in memory of the Dallas officers, the Baton Rouge officers, and absolutely all police officers um, that have lost their lives this year.